you're watching the Walking in Faith and Victory broadcast. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that we walk by faith and not by sight. Praise the Lord, I'm Pastor Mitch Keys of Fireball Faith Fellowship and Fresno Faith Fellowship. We have started a new church in Fresno, so we're one church in two locations. And I tell you, my wife and I, we're having a blast. And it's great to see how God is adding to this church here in Fireball, and he's adding to the church in Fresno. We're uh, just thrilled that God would use us, and it's such an honor to be called in today's uh, ministry. And, and uh, you know, you, you see a lot of pastors. I, I ran into a pastor. <laughs> And I said, uh, hey, how's, how you doing? How's your church going? He goes, it's all right. Well, it's not bad, but it's okay. I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> if a pastor's not excited about his ministry, and, and, then his people won't be excited about the ministry. I tell you, I'm thrilled. It's like, you know, uh, even though we're, uh, my wife and I, we're not old, but we're getting up. You know, in, in the senior class, amen. Uh, but we we feel refreshed. We feel younger, not older. We feel more uh, refreshed. You know, when you start doing the Word of God, yeah, it's more work, but it's exciting work. It's it's end time exciting work, and so we're just thrilled about it. And you happen to be in the Fresno area, f feel free to drop by if you don't have a local church, and uh, our address. Uh, will be on our website if you are interested, and we'd love to have you. But we're excited what God's doing in these last days, and and there's there's a there's a pace of grace, amen. That's increasing, and uh, we don't have a lot of time left here on the earth. And there's a lot of people, uh, you know, frankly, just I'm going to say it straight: they're going to hell, and uh, you know, God sends us, and 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 if if we're sent. That means people get to hear. They get to hear the good news. They get to hear uh, how good God is and how he set people free. So uh, we're in exciting times, and, and we're so uh, honored. Uh, and, it's, and, we, and I say that with great reverence and respect. We're so honored to be called in, uh, in ministry, amen, to be pastors. So I want you to join with me. Once again, I want to talk about faith, but uh, I want to talk about taking the lid off your faith. You know, some people, uh, are, they've, they're topped off, and it shouldn't be that way. We need to take the lid off. Uh, no holds bars. You know, I've heard Richard Roberts say, hey, Katie, bar the doors because we're having no holds bar service tonight. Amen. Well, that should be our attitude every day when we get up and we say, you know what? Today, I'm taking off the limits in my thinking. You know, when you spend as many years uh, for some folks as they have and still stay in the same level, stay in the same comfort zone, uh, they're not doing anything less, but they're not doing anything more. They're just kind of in a, in a zone of this is just good enough. Well, our attitude should be, you know what? This ain't good enough. We can do more. We can have more. We can be more. We can say more and we can see more. Amen. And, uh, and it's, it's time to just say, I'm sold out in these last days to do what God wants us to do. Uh, even if it wasn't the last days, you know, we, we should have a, a thriving attitude and heart. Boy, I tell you, I'm going all out for God this year. And, uh, and that's how I feel. I mean, uh, I'm just so thrilled and excited to see what God's going to do next because it's going to be good and, and, and because that's his nature and that's how he is. And I love it that, you know, uh, he does big things. He does great things, and I want to I want to be part of all the greatness He's doing around the earth. And I pray that Lord, if You're doing something great in the earth, let me be part of it, even if it's a small part. I want to be part of what You're doing, and that should be our heart. Amen. So, uh, and able to to uh, step into the level uh, of of greatness, or step into a level of of something that's just 
uh, being passive or just status quo, uh, we, we got we to gotta increase our faith. Amen. Uh, we have to have the attitude as my faith is, is for this level, but if I'm going to a new level, I need to have a greater faith, a greater level of faith, or, or have uh, my tank of faith needs to be full. Amen. You don't go very far if your tank is low. Uh, so I'm talking about your faith level, and it can increase. So I want you to look with me in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 and 24. It says, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. So he's saying, pay attention. If you're going uh, to go to the realm that I want you to go in, and maybe even in the realm of the Spirit, uh, it, you're going to have to pay attention. You, you need to be real sensitive uh, to what God's doing in, in these last days and what he's doing and wanting to do for you personally. So my son, attend to my words and incline your ear to my saying. Pay attention to what God's saying. Now he said, he, he said uh, you know, a lot of things in his word. Generally, he's saying things in his word and everything he says for the future or what he's wanting to do right now it's all based on the foundation of the word. He's not going to quote or say anything outside of his word. The Holy Spirit is that way. Uh, it says, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life. What? The word of God. God's saying. Uh, God's word that's written and God's word that's revelation and, and what God wants to do right now, um, it produces something called life. And, um, and, and so we, we got to make a, a new determination, maybe a recommitment, a stronger commitment, a consecration to God's word and to his saying, uh, what, he, what he's speaking into our hearts right now. What's he saying? Amen. I, I've heard Dr. Nancy say this. You know, you got to pay attention to what's going on in the room. Uh, you know, whether it be a green room or whether it be a setting of a church service or uh, a, a healing crusade or whatever, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit's wanting to do something. He's got a plan. He's got a purpose. And most services never reach full potential and full flow is because somebody's not paying attention. And uh, in most cases, it's the, the man of God or the people are just, you know, we, we can, as pastors, we can only take people as far as they want to go. And, and I know sometimes you talk about certain subjects or certain things. Uh, people begin to close doors or shut you down or the word bounces back at you. They're not receiving. And we need to come to a place where we just fully receive everything God, God has for us. And, uh, and realize that when we're in a church setting, we're, we're in a place of divine appointment. And we, are, we can be visited by God through our pastors, uh, uh, that special time of visitation. And every service, God wants to fully manifest and fully uh, complete His will and His plan, His desire for that service. And so, uh, you know, in a service, there could be many things going on with people's lives, different sets uh, of mindsets and thinking. Um, you know, some people are troubled, some people are anxious, some people are not, are, they're not interested, they're not responding right. Uh, you know, God is a perfect gentleman. The Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman, and He'll never cross the line of what we don't give Him permission to do or for. So we have to give him permission in every service. Well, we can do that daily in our life. It starts in our prayer life. It starts in our quiet time and our personal relationship with God every day. And it says, for they are life, the word of God, to those that find them and health to all your flesh. You want to live longer, live stronger? Uh, pay attention to what God's saying. And don't let the Word of God um, depart, amen, from your hearing, from your eyes, from your understanding. And uh, it, it's, it's, it is so uh, appropriate 
to respond right to God. Amen. Keep thy heart with all diligence. You know, whatever you're listening to, wherever church you're going to is what's growing inside of you. Keep your heart. Guard your heart. Don't just listen to any old preacher. Don't listen to any old gospel song. They call it gospel song, but most of that's full of emotions designed to get you to move in the realm of feelings rather than to lead you into God's presence to hear from, from Him. Very few people know how to write songs like that. And uh, they're, they got a lot of talent, uh, you know, abilities, but doesn't mean they have the annoying and doesn't mean they're following uh, what God's saying in the Word. Amen? Uh, you know, that's why I tell people, listen, uh, you know, your main feeder should be your pastor and then those he sits under. For us, we, we sit under uh, Dr. Nancy. Uh, you know, we, uh, we call her our pastor. She is our, uh, uh, Jesus is our covering, but she, we're accountable to her. I believe she is a spiritual uh, general and, and uh, stepped into the, a new realm of, uh, and she, she won't say it, but I, I believe she's, she's my personal apostle. Amen. I, I personally put myself under her on purpose because that's what God wants. God chose my leader. God chose my general. God chose my pastor. And, uh, and I'm so honored that God had the best for me. Amen. And, uh, uh, and I can only go as far as the one that I'm connected to. Amen. And, and uh, I'm, co I'm connected to Jesus, but I'm submitted to the authority uh, that she has in my life because God gave her authority. And so I submit to that. And so therefore I give her authority to speak in my life. And that way when, I, when I'm around her, uh, she'll be preaching because I'm just in the vicinity of where she's at. And revelation comes, answers comes because I was willing to be where God told me to be. Willing to submit to hear what God wanted me to hear. Uh, a lot of people don't just want to hear any old message. Um, you know, they, they uh, have itchy ears and they, they want to hear what they want to hear. And, and so those folks, you can't help. Uh, if they're not willing to listen to God and listen to sometimes correction, uh, you know, that uh, the flesh doesn't like, you know, I tell Dr. Nancy, you can't offend me. Boy, I tell you what, she's got strong <laughs> and said some things into my life that, you know, that, uh, I could have been offended. But, you know, that doesn't mean she was wrong when she said it. But my flesh didn't like it. And, and the flesh is easy, easily offended if it's not governed by the Spirit, your human spirit and the Word of God. So I just govern it. I just say, flesh, you're not going to be offended. You're going to receive. And She's not Jesus. No, she don't take the place of the Holy Spirit. No, but the Holy Spirit speaks through her. And, and just being around where God told me to be, I get answers in my life. Amen. It's like if you got a kink in your hose, uh, you know, there's no, there's no flow. Or maybe you open up the kink a little bit, there's a small flow. But when it, when it opens up all the way, and you ever have a hose that was kinked and you unkinked it, and man, the water flowed the way you want it to flow and gave you the pressure that you needed for whatever you're doing? Uh, I tell you, it, it, that's what took place in our life when we joined up with her ministry. Doesn't mean that was something wrong with other ministries that we're connected to. I thank God for those ministries. I don't have anything, uh, not a bad word to say about any of the ministries that God had set me under. And there's only been two. But uh, and I thank God for them. They took me where I needed to be. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they had what God wanted to put in me. And, uh, and so led me to, some, to, to Dr. Ed Dufresne and Dr. Nancy Dufresne. And I thank God for that. And, uh, and I thank God that I've submitted uh, for a period of time to where God wanted me to. And, the, and, uh, and I don't move fast, boy, I tell you. Uh, I make sure it's God. But when it's God, then I move quickly. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know why I said that. That was for somebody because maybe somebody's in transition and uh, you need to hear this. And I know what that's like. Amen. Uh, it's like a holding pattern, like an airplane just flying around in circles until you land. You get the okay to land. And thank God we landed right where God wanted us to land. And we're so honored and so blessed by our relationship with our woman of God. Amen. So many people fail because they see themselves failing. Or here's something I heard the other day, and I tell you, it, it just disturbed my spirit when I heard it. And this person was telling me, you know, we prayed and we asked God to do this, and it seems like God is not doing it, but the devil is is doing what he wants to do, and it seems like he's more powerful than God. Uh, I thought I said, "What did you say?" Uh, yeah, it just seems like you know God is weak and the devil's strong, you know. <clears throat> and I thought, "Oh, what ignorance just come out your mouth!" And and as that person's talking, finally I just said, "That's enough. You don't know what you're saying." And I'm not here to learn from you. You're here to learn from me. So if you're going to learn and you want some help, you just keep quiet. And first of all, number one, you're waiting on God to get rid of all your problems. And most of your problems in your life is because of your disobedience. And uh, you don't know who you are in Christ. You don't know that God's waiting on you to resist the devil. The Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee. It doesn't say God will resist him. It doesn't say God will speak to your mountains to be cast into the sea if you don't doubt, but you'll have what God says. No, it says you speak to the mountain. You tell the devil to get lost. You tell the devil to shut up. You tell him to, to stop his assignment towards your life and you're not going to put up with it. And God will empower what you say. God is waiting for the faith command. He's waiting for you to tell the devil what to do. And then the devil will do what you say. Amen. Uh, and, and that's because of what Jesus did on the cross. He paid the price for our authority. He, 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 was, he was sacrificed like a, like a lamb shed his own blood, went, went to hell, conquered death, hell, and the grave, rose to heaven and put that holy blood like a sacrificial lamb on the altar of heaven. God was so pleased. And, and you can hear the, the end results of that when Jesus said to his disciples, all power and all authority has been given to me, meaning God's pleased with this sacrifice. I did it right. God did it legal. And now you go. He's telling his disciples, now you go in, and in that power. You go in that authority. Why would Jesus say all power and authority has been given me and, 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 and not say anything else? He did, he did say something. He said, now you go. You preach the good news. You go cast out devils. You go raise the dead. Why? He's handing over the power, the authority that was given to man in the first place. And I'll tell you, when you think about what Christ did for us and still continues to do for us, uh, when we agree with his word and take what he's already done for us. And it's important that we know what God has done for us. Amen. And what already belongs to us. And what belongs to us is uh, he gave us his words. He gave us his authority. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us his name. And at that name, every demon in hell trembles. So the Holy Spirit is just waiting on words. What words? Faith words. The faith command. And when we begin to speak in the name of Jesus, boy, I tell you, that sets things in motion right there. And we start telling the devil, you're not pow more powerful than God. I don't care what this habit that's had me bound. I've been set free of it. So every assignment, everything that you have kept me bound like chains with are broken in Jesus' name. In fact, they were broken 2,000 years ago. So I'm just going to 
I'm just going to receive my freedom. I'm going to, I, I'm going to receive my freedom and know that I'm not cursed anymore. I, I don't have to listen to you no more. I don't have to be sick no more. I don't have to be in poverty no more. So I resist those and I speak increase. I speak health. I speak freedom in my life in Jesus name. And, and, and God's just waiting on somebody to talk like that so he can perform it. And, uh, and, and, you know, as much as I have tried to help a person to rescue, bring a word of rescue, I'm not the rescuer, but I release words into someone's heart and Jesus does the rest. The Holy Spirit does the rest. But when people refuse to see uh, what faith does, faith, once it's, the words are spoken, Faith sees the answer. It doesn't see, I, I, I can't be set free. It says, it sees, I am set free. Uh, I'm no longer under bondage. I see by faith what God wants me to see. Amen. So why would God give us words and, and says these words, if you keep them in front of you, if you keep them or bury them deep in your spirit, they'll be, health to you. Amen. There'll be health to your flesh. There'll be long life and, and, and prosperous life. So what he's saying is put away from you a forward mouth, meaning a disobedient mouth. Don't talk like that anymore. Don't say that the devil's more powerful or this habit, maybe a drug habit or pornography habit, uh, maybe an anger. Uh, you, you, you don't have to say those words anymore. You don't have to live that way anymore. It says, put away from you a disobedient mouth. Don't glorify the problem and talk about the mountain. Talk about how good God is and you're set free of that stuff. Amen. It says, perverse lips and perverse lips put far away from thee. Uh, so speaking wrong words are what causes people to fall or fail in life. But if we'll just say what Jesus said, all power and authority has been given to me now, you take that power. You take that word. You take that authority in Jesus' name. Amen? Well, I want to continue talking about this. So uh, faith sees and faith speaks, but also faith acts. And that's what I want to talk about. I have talked about this before, but I want to remind some people uh, once again. So I appreciate you tuning in today. And uh, we'll, we'll continue this, this thought and this word about taking the lid off in the next broadcast. And I'm just so grateful and thankful that you would join us today. And I pray that you are blessed and, uh, and you are highly favored. Amen. God bless you.